Your tooth feeling better? Mm -hmm. That's what that was. Mm -hmm. An infection. I open. <laughs> yeah, that was scary, Uli. <laughs> Glad you're feeling better. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit, but it's like not as big as it was. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Well, so you have to get it cold though, right? It's right. when? Next Friday? Ooh. And they're just doing the one. Yeah. Oh, you at least got to have her wisdom teeth pulled. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to do one and then I guess the other one. How come you don't want to just do them both? Well, I guess, I, don't, I mean, I guess I could. Hold on. It's like $750 just for one. How much is it? $150. For one tooth? Oh my gosh. And then the other one you said was kind of going sideways. Yeah, it's going in sideways. Wait, whoa, what are you giving those dogs there? The kneecaps. I know. Isn't that like the nastiest like name for them? But I, don't I like the way they feel. Yeah. I know. When I first uh, you know, decided to start giving the dogs those kneecaps, I was like, couldn't they call them something better? But they love them. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we have we have some good stuff to go over tonight, guys. Um, I'm gonna turn this around like I always do to see who's jumping on. Hold on. Okay, Roberta Cutshaw is watching, and Chuck Fletcher. Hi, Chuck. And Donna is watching. Uh, Kara, um, Naomi, and Kara tuning in. Hello. Victoria Wilms and Meg Mercer, Lori Shadone, and Vivian Trinidad. Hi, Viv. That's my good friend, Viv. And let's see, Christine Rural and Peaches and Lorraine. Yes, so we're going to have a really interesting live feed tonight. So I'm going to Say hello to all the new supporters. Our Facebook page has been a jumping lately. <laughs> so we have a lot of new followers on here. So if you're joining for the first time, my name's Tracy. The name of our group is Tracy's Paws. And we are in Hondo, Texas. And we are a small group of dog lovers doing great things. We have a lot going on tonight. So Hopefully I won't, the new people joining, you won't feel like you're in the dark because we're going to be talking about some old business, some new business, and some future business. <laughs> so I'll do my best to fill you in like a, a thousand feet view of what, what we have going on here. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and start because I, <laughs> I told them to be quiet when we started. Um, so after we do our little bit of housekeeping, I'm going to show you the new dogs. Wait, wait, wait till you see some of the cuties that came in. I did send um, a sweet mama and babies to Allison, so they won't be on the feed, but I will post their picture in the comment section when, we, when I stop, because it's a precious, precious little mama with three tiny, tiny, tiny babies, but she's literally bald with mange. Um, so these dogs came in from private rescuers and also from one of the shelters down there. Is that, which one is that? That's Betty. That's Betty. Okay, so you know those two cute little scruffies that I posted on the front of the page and I asked you all to name them? Um, I chose the name Wilma and Betty. Now I did that though for a very uh, funny reason um, on one hand, but a very pathetic reason on the other. So, as you know, I've been going down to these border shelters now for years. And the last couple of years, there's one of them that I have watched the conditions go from bad to worse. And I started feeling like I was in um, literally like the prehistoric <laughs> age of the Flintstones. So, I'm going to just nickname that shelter uh, the City of Bedrock and Wilma and Betty, and we have all of the Flintstones here, um, just to kind of, it's that theme I have going on right now. It's the theme of bedrock, because I'm, I'm at a point, um, and we're gonna talk about this first and then put it aside, um, so I can keep you up to date. So as you know, one of my big pet peeves is cleaning. Hold on a minute, Yuli. Yeah. Is, is cleaning one of my pet peeves? <laughs> it 
What would I do if I ever walked in here and saw you or any of the tech squirting a hose while the dogs were in the kennel, squirting a hose in there? What would I do? He squirt under the hose. <laughs> <laughs> but you know something, you would never do that. It's You're true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're trained properly, um, and you love these animals. You would never do something like that. That that really is kind. I cry before I do that. You, right? Oh, I know, I know. So as you know, um, and it's not just been one time that I've been down there that I have seen them take a hose, squirt it in the kennel while these poor animals are in there, and the urine and the feces that are on the ground. The water hits the concrete, ricochets it right up in their faces. Um, so it's not been once or twice or three times, it's every time, except for one time. Um, as you all know, last year I met the mayor down there, who was a very nice man. I met him and one of the councilmen down there. And I can tell you when I pulled up to this place, there were more cars there than I've ever seen. So I figured, wow, you know, they've hired some people to come in or, or told people to come in. They were binge cleaning. And I call it binge cleaning because they knew the mayor was coming. None of the animals were wet. They, the kennels were dry and I've I had never seen that before. So, you know, I, I have been speaking to the mayor on and off for the past year, but apparently I haven't been irritating enough. <laughs> Now, I will also say he's a very nice man, and the mayor and the mayors of all of these cities that feed dogs into bedrock, um, they, you know, they're not hired to run the animal shelter. They are worrying about budgets and public safety and stuff like that. So, you know, they have to hire people that they believe are doing a good job and are going to run their shelter um, and have it up to code. But this particular place has proven over and over and over and over again that the person in charge of this shelter um, doesn't know how to manage people. They obviously don't respect them and they don't know how to properly clean kennels. Now recently, um, and this is why I am, I am absolutely focused, laser focused on getting this cleaned up. I believe that this place is a health hazard to the community. So last week, as you know, we had to humanely euthanize a little dog named Mocha for violent seizures. She came from the shelter. They don't clean properly. Now you do know that even in the most perfect facility, you can't ever guarantee that there's not gonna be illness or things that are transmitted from dog to dog. But darn it, you better be able to look in the mirror and say, I did everything that I could right to prevent these dogs from getting sick, you know, and, and going on to have a good outcome. They can't say that here. So we had to humanely euthanize Mocha. And I started thinking to myself, <laughs> what if Mocha had been returned to her owner? because we had to return two dogs to their owners about two or three weeks ago. It was a cute little Pomeranian and a Shih Tzu. You, probably, you guys probably remember them. I returned them to their owner. They got out of the yard, nicest people. They had four small children in the home. And I started thinking, what if Mocha had been returned to that family with those four little kids in there and started having violent seizures, foaming at the mouth, this place is sending out dogs into the community not knowing what they're being exposed to. Some of these diseases are zoonotic, and what that means is you people can get that can get infected from the dogs. So I, I believe this place is a public health hazard, and we are going to do everything that we can if we could just get the cleaning part of it started. I think the rest would follow. Now, I did talk to the mayor the other day through Messenger, and I asked him to please respond to my concerns that I sent by registered mail no later than September 2nd, or I would be focusing our efforts in a different direction. And he promised that, well, he said he was gonna do his best to um, answer the letter 
He wants to improve the shelter to make it better than it is. Um, and he said he would meet me down there on October 15th when I go down there to pick up more dogs. Now, mind you, I've watched this shelter do this stuff before. I've been keeping an eye on their Facebook page and boy, are they hyping it up showing the kennels looking clean, the dogs getting adopted, dogs leaving, the social media has picked up tenfold. So what they typically will do is go under public scrutiny and then they clean it up for a while and then it goes like this again. So if you're watching or listening uh, to the manager of that place, I'm not buying it nor am I going to sit back and watch what you've done to these animals over the past two years. I'm not going to sit back and watch it and I'm going to take this as far as I need to until you have standard operating procedures in that facility that teaches your people how to clean those kennels properly with proper disinfectant and keep those animals as safe and clean as you can during their stay there. Um, this is not the prehistoric days of bedrock, okay? It's not. It's 2022. There's free resources out there to teach you how to clean if you don't know how to do it, which obviously you don't based on my eyes and what I've witnessed over the past two years. Um, so I'm hopeful that this mayor is going to bring some muscle because, again, when I went down there and he met me down there, the kennels never looked better. And that tells me they respect this mayor. Um, and I, I guarantee you that this mayor is not going to want to be made a fool of. And right now they're making a fool of him because whatever line of this they're feeding him, um, I, I'm hoping he's going to bring some muscle into that place and say, no, it's got to be brought up to code and hopefully they'll be inspected randomly where they can't just clean it up for a while and then fall off the wagon again because I'm not going to allow that. Every other shelter I go to down there does their best. I can honestly say the ones I visit anyway, um, they do their best to clean and the animal suffering ends when it goes when they go into these other places. The suffering begins when it goes into bedrock. So. We're gonna just table that right now. Just know I am on it. And, um, you know, I thought being nice was gonna help and try to support, but it hasn't. And, you know, anytime uh, in life, you know, I know here, I strive for perfection, but obviously I'm never gonna reach there. But at least by striving for perfection, maybe I'll get to excellent. <laughs> And I, used to, I try to do that every single day that I wake up in the morning. If this shelter would strive for perfection, maybe they would reach good. <laughs> and I would be okay with that. <laughs> so, yeah, I start getting real worked up when I start thinking about it because I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in the management down there. I believed in those people. I really thought, okay, you know, I'm going to just observe, I'm going to watch things, and it just was disgusting, is all I can say. And these images, I don't think I'll ever get them out of my head of the stuff that I've witnessed over the past two years. Um, this whole industry, rescue groups, shelters, we need regulations. I mean, I think we have a wonderful, beautiful place here. And of all the groups that I know of, if anybody wants to see what Tracy's Paws is up to, tune in on Saturday night and you can see what we do here. We're very public about everything and we don't hide anything. You want to come out, come on out. Um, but regulations are needed because there's a lot of groups. I don't think that, I think, you know, people think they're rescuing the animals and they're taking them from bedrock and putting them in a worse environment. And... I just wish there was a governing body that came in and just checklisted your place to make sure you're doing things right. Because there should be no ego at all when you're dealing with animals and children. So if an inspector came in to Oliver's house and they said, Tracy, I see something here that you're doing glaringly wrong and I want to show you a way to improve it. I'm all ears. Yuli would be all ears. Ashley, there's no ego when it comes to, you know, helping animals and kids. We should all try to do our best to make sure that we're, we're providing the best care for them. 
um, they need us. They don't have a voice, right? There's nothing worse to me than a group of people taking advantage of children, elderly, or animals that can't speak for themselves and treat them like crap. And they can't tell on them, they can't say anything, but, but I sure can. And I will no longer stay silent about it. So, okay, so that's that. Um, now we're gonna move on to the Milton. <clears throat> the Milton is our new building that we have been campaigning for, for since, well, we've been campaigning for a long time, since the con man and the cult actually <laughs> took the money and ran with the other group. So we had to start over, but we're doing actually very, very well. Um, however, I will say this. You all know that the economy right now, there's a lot of escalating costs. The electricity bill has went up here three times what it used to be. Um, cost of food, everything is escalated right now. And there's a lot of people that are suffering and struggling. Um, so, you know, Rhonda and I, we, were, we sat down and we said, wow, you know, with that big and zero win that we had, um, you know, that could not have come at more perfect timing. However, our rebid, because the last time we had our phase two bid come in, this was a year, year and a half ago, um, it came in a little higher than what we thought. Now that doesn't mean we can't start. We are starting in September. But what it means is our, our once a year fundraiser, which is the big give that is September 22nd, starts on a Thursday at 6 p.m. and runs to 6 p.m. on Friday we have to meet our number <laughs> and so and the reason we have to meet our number is we are creating here an organization that we're going to be sustainable for a long time we can't go jumping into um you know million dollar projects until we feel that we have enough operating budget you know to make our our facility here sustain while that building is going up so we're going to be meeting with the accountants on the 31st and putting together um, a goal for that big gift fundraiser. And I want everybody to know, as you know, I don't, I don't want anybody donating unless you are okay to donate. And participation with me is, could be just sharing our post or cheering us on from the sidelines. So this year might be a little challenging with everything we have going on in our economy. So we're going to come up with a number that will finish phase two in its completion and help us with our operating budget just in case we hit some more rough patches like we have lately with rescue in general. Check with all the groups you know. Adoptions are down and things are just not, they're not booming like they were during COVID. So during COVID, the whole animal industry just soared. Now we're feeling a lull and we don't want to be getting into a huge, uh, you know, we, we want some cushion so we're going to feel like we can sustain during another bump in the road if we have to. So write, uh, write this down, guys, September 22nd, 6 p.m. That's a Thursday and it goes to Friday um, at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, now, something really, uh, now I don't want to get anybody too excited about this, but we were chosen uh, for an episode on Jewel TV, which is a, um, well, it's a newer network, but it's very, uh, it, it reminded me of the only good TV show that we used to do back when I was with the con man. <laughs> I'm in a real, real raw mood tonight, guys. I'm in a feisty mood. Um, but we have an episode on Jewel TV that we were promised that's going to be coming up. So basically, we get to feature all of our hard um, uh, to adopt out dogs and longer ter term stay dogs. So anyway, that's that's very exciting. So I'll let you know when that is. We're going to be uploading some content and they'll be putting together some some neat things for us. And then let me show you this real quick and then we're going to go look at the new dogs. So I could not be prouder, guys. Our educational um, program is coming together. So all of the material is um, in Spanish as well. Dixie has the ickies published. We're waiting on our large order to come in. So I will start sending you your books out. Um, 
Those books should start shipping by the end of the month. And you wanna see some worms and bugs? Look what else we have. Hold on, I gotta open this. You may have seen this when I was at the Uvalde event, but this is a great teaching lesson for these kids. These are mosquitoes. We have ticks and fleas and chagas bugs. And this is all part, all part of the program, an educational program called PAWS. Okay. You ready to go see the dogs? <laughs> so I know I've been talking a little bit, so hold on here. I wanna show you these new puppies that came in because boy, are they cute. All right. All right, guys. So first I'm gonna show you, hey, what are you, how come you're not on your bed? This is Hippie. Come here, Hippie. Hold on, come on, Hippie, Hippie. Hold on, come on. Okay, guys, so this sweet soul, um, believe it or not, he was actually rescued by the same family that we got moose from. And uh, Vivian, who's my dear friend, her mom, had this dog and he had wandered up to her property with a broken, like a broken hip. And Ashley Garza from Love Us Mutts uh, sponsored his surgery and I, I didn't even know that she had did that. And she didn't know that I already knew the family that helped this dog, you know, that, you know, he was on their property. So, um, unfortunately, the lady that was uh, rehabbing him, which is Vivian's mom, she fell and broke her arm. So, Hippie came to me. Peace out. <laughs> hey, who did that? That was really loud. Look, I think that's their way of telling me they want more food. So we have some more puppies that came in. Um, these puppies are from a shelter, a smaller shelter down near the border, a very clean shelter that vaccinates, that kept these puppies um, probably longer than most shelters would have. They, bit, they were there for a couple of months. And they arrived here with three vaccines already. Um, you know, it, it's always nice to see that. You know that they're, you know, protected against some of the deadly diseases that we see. And we had them out running today, out on the 22 acres. And when I took a video of that for the gal that runs the shelter, she said it warmed her heart because these puppies have been in a, basically a run their whole life. So they've never gotten the, the chance to run out in an open field before and they had so much fun. They did. Right, I don't even know if they felt grass before, but they had a great time. <laughs> okay, so their names are, um, I hope I get this right, Daffodil, Cheryl, and Amaryl. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna show you some of the, the uh, some small fluffy fluffies, and I don't remember all their names. So we did intake today, and, and I, you know, I'm over the name game, so I love it when you guys put names in the comment section because then I don't have to think of them. I mean, I literally go brain dead trying to figure out more names that we haven't used. I have, over the course of a decade, have rescued probably seven, 8,000 dogs. I'm over the name game, hold on, hold on. Oh, look at this hippie. Are you, are you having a good time here, hippie? So here, hippie is being rehabbed here. Um, he gets to sleep in here on his cushy bed or come out here. Look at him. He is like the sweetest boy. He really, really is. One of our Texas sweet little brown dogs. And the type of surgery that he had is called an FHO. It's a femoral head ostectomy. And basically what that is, is if you looked at an x-ray of him right now, you know the ball that goes into the socket on your hip joint? They cut that ball off. So if the x-rays, they actually kind of look funny. It's just like a stick. It looks like, well, how does he even, you know, stand? I don't know how it works, but it does. And he's getting around on it okay. Um, so he is using it, which I am so happy to see that. Um, sometimes it takes these dogs with these FHOs a while to start using their leg, but he's actually doing quite well. 
And I love his new name. We didn't know what to name him. We kept saying, hey, how's the hip dog? And I said, why don't we just name him Hippie? <laughs> Peace out, Hippie. He was eating a kneecap in here. He must have finished it. Cute, cute, cute. Okay, now wait till you see this. Now this is going to make you just, uh, hold on a minute, guys. Look at these fluffers. Hi, hi. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's one smooth coat and the other ones are fluffy. And these poor little things came in. Um, they were on the street, I believe. They came in from a private rescuer um, and they're just so sweet, but they're very wormy. So we're getting their deworming, um, trying to clean up their poop. Puppies come in, you know, with these bloated bellies and you know, this is what happens when you don't properly take care of dogs, um, especially puppies. They get loaded with roundworms and other parasites. So we'll definitely make sure that they, um, that they get what they need here. So they have a private suite at Oliver's house. They can come in and out as they please to get out of the heat. And I think they really like it here. They have toys, all the food that they could possibly eat and they're just adorable. We're so thankful for Ashley and her volunteer Erica for bringing them to us. I just love them. Okay, so let's go look at the other ones. Right, Hippie? Look at him. He loves it here. We have to let him out separately, though, from all the other dogs because I'm worried that, you know, he's going to get injured with that hip. Okay. So... You want to see Wilma and Betty, our Flintstone dogs? Now remember from the picture, they looked very nervous. Not anymore. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, look, and this one wants to see me too. Okay. Hi, sweetie. Hi. I know. So, I can honestly tell you that they, have, they bond. They bond very, very, very uh, quickly. Can you put this up here? They bond very quickly and literally are already attached to me and the other people that are here. All it took was just some kindness. It was it. Dogs are very forgiving. Um, I've got one here, though, that is going to be a challenge, and I'll show you him in a minute. He might be another Peaches. Uh, for those of you that, that don't remember Peaches, the little Chihuahua from the abandoned house, she is in a foster care with a small child, uh, doing great, but she's still shy. So she's, we're, we're gonna start looking for uh, a special person for her. So Wilma and Betty, they're not, uh, look at her. Yeah, I see you over there. Hi, Betty. Aw, <laughs> okay, those are those two. And this is Pebbles, look at Pebbles. Hi, Pebbles. Now this, this little precious soul, is a social butterfly. There is not any uh, scenario I can't see her being okay with. She's bubbly, fun, and just loves everybody, a wiggle butt. She's got a nubby tail about this big. It's real, really funny. I'm like, I don't know where her, the rest of her tail went, but she's got a little nubby tail. She came in with the really shy dog. Um, they were, owner surrendered, I guess the owner had was sick and could not take care of them, so the neighbor was helping. Now her, her buddy, Barney, is gonna be challenging for me. So hold on, let me show you Barney. Hi, Barney, see he's not, he's not even in his bed. Barney, it's okay, you're okay, Barney. It's okay, honey, you're okay. I know, honey, it's okay. I know, honey, you're okay, it's okay. I touch your foot, you're okay, sweetheart, you're okay. It's okay, it's okay. I'm good with doggies like you, I promise I am. I know, I'm not gonna hurt you, honey. I'm not gonna hurt you, that's okay, darling. You're okay, you're okay. Bless his heart. You know, it's just gonna take, take a while. Um, he's given me the look that if you push me, I might bite you, so I'm not going to push him. Um, 
I can handle these ones pretty well. Everyone always knows I like these ones. They're naughty. They have behavior problems like I do. <laughs> Sometimes we just work them out together. He's gonna take some time though and we just need to give him what he needs. Um, yeah. You could just see it in his face. He's, he's so, so scared. So scared. You're gonna be okay, I promise. You're gonna be okay. That's what I would call stink eye. <laughs> But he'll, he will be okay. Peaches is doing great. Peaches was like lunging at us when she first came in. You know, we don't know what these dogs have been through. We don't know. And just like people, they have to be given some time to decompress and just chill out. Um, and once we let them do that, we'll have a better idea of, you know, what his temperament is really like. Um, I did check with the gal that uh, we got him from, who took him from the people that were caring for him and they say he's very sweet so you know just gonna give him a chance not all of them have perfect temperament just like all of us don't have perfect temperament right <laughs> nobody's perfect okay and then we have this little one. Oh, this is the sweetest little thing come here hi sweetie this is gazoo and gazoo is was found um I want to say laying by some uh, department store. He was on the, the road for a long time. And Ashley helped this sweet dog. And he was in foster care before we got him. He's really, really a, a lovely dog. He's very clingy with me. So when we go outside with him, he jumps in my lap. He'll jump in my lap and just kind of whine. Like, oh, you know, he doesn't want to get out of my lap. Doesn't want me to put him down. Um, I think he's, he's been abandoned, I would imagine, and uh, he finds his person and he loves deeply, <laughs> you know, kind of like Wilma and Betty, <laughs> you know, bless their hearts, right? And then we moved a lot of our puppies. Um, we, we did some juggling around here. I don't think I'm going to go out there just yet, um, but I am going to take you out here. Hopefully the phone does not. Look at them all. These are Whispers babies. And then look what we have here. There's little Mallory and Freckles and Dina and Martin. Hi, Mallory. Say hi to Mallory. <laughs> I love this little group, guys. They play and have so much fun. Aww. Those two, I'll tell you, it's nonstop shenanigans. Aww. I just love them all. Okay, and the last thing I want to mention or just share with you guys is I wanted to say thank you to Elaine Pugh. I love all of you guys, as you know. I, I mean that from my heart, but Elaine is a, a one of our followers. She's one of our lions. She's been with us for a long time, and it always seems like, I don't know how she does this, but when I'm having a bad day, just out of the blue, a card will come in the mail, a handwritten note, and she's she always sends in a donation. And I want her to know, I, I love reading what you write here to us and to me. It just always brightens my day. So thank you. Thank you very much, Elaine. Um, and that, I believe, guys, is going to be about it. Um, if you have any questions, I, I, I will take them while I let you guys stare at the pups because who wants to stare at my Ugamug when you could be looking at little puppies? So hold on. Oh, look at him. He went to bed. He put himself to bed. How sweet. <laughs> oh my gosh, is he awesome. Hi, hippie. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna look, and I really always feel bad because I find all these questions after I stop the live feed. Let me see here. Oh, um, one thing I also will mention to anybody that's new, um, you're going to have to listen to me for a minute and see my face instead of the puppies. I always get asked, why are your dogs in crates and why are they covered? So the coverings are like our masks and they're in crates because they're up for the night. Our dogs are running all day long. These girls, um, all they do all day long 
is rotate, rotate dogs in and out, walk them around the property, exercise them. We believe very strongly here in exercise. Exercise is good for the mind, the body, and the soul. You cannot keep dogs confined without exercise. It creates, I call it, you know, just cage crazy. So when you see them here and you see them in crates, they are tired. These dogs have been running all day and they're covered because we get some of our dogs from bedrock down in the prehistoric shelter down there. And if they're harboring something, a lot of these things are airborne. So those sheets act like a mask. So it's not a perfect, perfect situation, but that's what we do and that's what we work with. It helps. Hold on, look at this. Who's doing that? Look at those bellies. <laughs> oh my gosh. They've got their own little private suite here and they're just... <laughs> I'm trying to get this camera in here. See, there you go. Oh my gosh. Y'all are bad. I do know the little, there's one boy, he's the smooth coat, and we named him Rumble. But I don't know what the little girl's names are. I can't remember. Look at this. <laughs> about it all right let's see yes we have a lot of precious babies guys and do you ever come to Minnesota yes I do sometimes but I don't have it on my calendar for uh, anytime soon but I am going to Leesburg Virginia on October 8th I think it's the 8th right I better be the 8th or the 13th the 8th it's the 8th um, and Big Rick and Eddie, it's confirmed the Border Boys are going with me, so I'm going to have muscle with me, and these, these guys are so much fun to travel with. I can't wait. We're going to have a good time. I'll be, I'll be learning some new Spanish, listening to some new music. Uh, Mary Beth wants to know, how is Moose? Moose is doing good. We keep him outside, him and Senna during the live feed. Because Senna will, she doesn't like to be crated and she'll sometimes bark. So we keep that group out. Um, let's see. Let's see what other. At the Minnesota. Da, 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 da. I will go back through and I will uh, answer any of these questions that I have not gotten to. Um, Yes, and I'll answer them on the, the live feed, and I'm all, I mean, on the, on the comments, and I'm also going to put um, the picture of Allison's mangy mama that is not here. She's in foster care. Okay, guys, don't forget to spay and neuter all of your weird friends, your relatives, and all your cats and dogs, too. I love you, and I'll see you guys next week, okay? Bye.